I would like to introduce Nikhil. Nikhil is the uh, founder and rather creator of Umid uh, uh, for Animal, Found uh, Animal Foundation. And he runs this uh, setup, which is an NGO uh, very near to Gurgaon. Uh, we were talking about uh, where is it located. It is uh, located in a village near Gurgaon, near Pathway School. And uh, Nikhil is, uh, and, and you know, you have to have your own vehicle to reach there. Uh, because it is a bit in the interior. And uh, Nikhil, I would, you know, like to start from, uh, you know, asking you that, you know, how do you define Umid? What is Umid? Umid, uh, <clears throat> um, Umid is a rehabilitation center. The way I have designed it, uh, the way it is, uh, it's not a shelter at all. Uh, we don't uh, like or try to keep permanent animals. Um, every animal who comes at Umid is uh, for a purpose. They would get treated, rehabilitated, um, or, or some other thing, and then they will have to go out, they have to get adopted, or um, if it's a street animal, get treated and then released back at the spot. Um, only a certain um, uh, situations and cases wherein we cannot have a release back, uh, we keep the animal permanent. Otherwise, uh, the main motive is uh, rescue, treat, release. That's that's the main motive behind it. So it is not like a, you know, shelter, shelter. It is more like a rehab center, wherein, you know, if an animal is in need, uh, then you take the animal in, uh, uh, fix uh, whatever is, is, is needed, and then you uh, release uh, the animal back to from where it was coming, right? And uh, yes. is this for Absolutely. is this limited? Yeah, is this limited to any specific types of animals or all types of animals? Is it open for all types of animals? <clears throat> so um, majority is dogs. What we do. But we don't say no to any case in emergency or in requirement. Um, if we have a cow nearby, we can treat that for a certain time period. However, the, the permanent and good treatment should be done at uh, a particular cow shelter or a cow center. Uh, but uh, for interim basis, like uh, happens many times, the Han Foundation would rescue a cow. They don't have any place to move the cow right now. <coughs> They would send it to us for a day or two. Um, we have had horses, donkeys, uh, camels. Uh, at present, we have dogs and uh, pigs. And we have about uh, 80, 90 dogs and pigs overall. Wow. How, how big is the area? It's about two acres. It's about two acres. So if I... Uh, go to me, then I will be welcomed by how many animals altogether? Initially, the moment you enter, you get you'll be welcomed by about uh, 50, 60 odd dogs, okay. and uh, then the more you get inside, you would see more. <coughs> pigs have a different section. We have about right. uh, four to five pigs. Uh, there was a mother pig uh, who was rescued from butchering by a wonderful female. Um, and then she was short on space. She got the pig to us uh, for an interim basis. But uh, it turned out to be that mother pig was pregnant and she delivered the babies at a place. And uh, then we couldn't release. We couldn't send them anywhere. So they're kind of permanent residents of me. <clears throat> got it. So, you know, we have more people who have joined in. I will just take uh, a quick uh, detour and update everybody what we're doing and then say hello to Hi Minty. Uh, Minty Sodhi just said hello. And Shivain Verma just said that Hi. Umid does amazing work. I've heard a lot about their work. Keep it up. Same here, Shivain. I'm a big fan of Umid. I live in Gurgaon and have been hearing a lot of good things and have seen a lot of good work they have done around. And uh, so people, we, uh, I, uh, I am Rana Atiya. I am the founder of dogspot.in and uh, we have uh, Nikhil today as a guest. He is the creator of Umid for Animals Foundation. And we are talking about how 
uh, he started Omid and what happens at Omid. So we are going to cover all that. And uh, for everybody who are listening to me, there is a link which has been pinned at the in the comments. Uh, space you can click and know more about uh, what uh, uh, Nikhil is doing and uh, what uh, what Umid has been doing. You can also do the donation. It is a link of Impact Guru. So if you want to donate, please go ahead. Sorry about that. That's my uh, you know dog who started barking. That's so uh, coming. Yeah. So coming back, Nikhil, uh, you know, when you said that, you know, we will be welcomed uh, by so many people, I also wanted to, you know, understand that you rightly said that it's a rehab center. How, how, if it's a rehab center, so ideally it should be that you get these animals and then you uh, treat them and you actually send them back to their own, own place. But uh, how do you have so many animals now? Please, uh, you know, tell everybody. Uh, we have actually spoken about it in the background, but yeah. Yeah. So uh, initially when we started, I started with this concept only with the rehabilitation center. But uh, the initial times, we had a lot of pups coming. And if a pup comes at an early age for some kind of a treatment, and the treatment is long by any chance, the pup cannot be released back. Uh, there is no way because the pup doesn't know how to fend uh, outside and how to how to survive, how to fight different situations. So in that case, um, it is absolutely impossible to release the pup. Uh, unfortunately, uh, there aren't many people who are looking for uh, adoption of uh, indie dogs. Uh, so these kind of dogs become a permanent residence. I, I hope and wish if a lot of people understand the importance of uh, the indie dogs and, and desi dogs, which are available, which are best uh, uh, immune system. They are the best in terms of their intelligence. They are the best in terms of um, sniffing, finding every aspect. They are the best dogs and they are mixed breed. Mixed breed dogs are supposed to be genetically perfect dogs. If we get more adoption calls of indie dogs and, and uh, you know, the, the basic uh, work of Omid will have a lot of uh, help from these people. Uh, these dogs can get adopted. They can go to their houses and Omid will just function as a rehab more and will will be able to cater to more cases and work more uh, towards the distress calls than to have these permanent residents. Do you also undertake sterilization programs uh, uh, through Mead? How do you do that? Um, unfortunately, we don't have a setup like that. We're working on it. So we don't have a sterilization setup as of now. Uh, but whatever dogs come to us uh, for treatment, uh, we try and get them sterilized and then release them back if they're not sterilized. Uh, the ones who get adopted definitely get sterilized and then get adopted. <clears throat> so we don't have an in-house uh, uh, setup wherein we have uh, operation theater and doctors available to do it. Uh, the way we work is we take all our cases to private vets all over Gurgaon and even in, in Delhi at times. And we try and get the best facility of the best doctor available for that case. And... Uh, and... Uh, uh, you know, um, sorry, I, I missed. It. There was a call actually. That's so, okay. um, no problem. What was the point? Sorry. You were saying that uh, you know you take these uh, dogs yeah. to your vets, and then then that is how you uh, treat yeah, them. Yeah, right? yeah. So, so with private vets, the sterilization cost is a little higher. We cannot do mass sterilization in that. Uh, what we can do actually is uh, single odd case. The moment. We have a healthy dog recovered from an injury or a sickness. We get their dog sterilized and then uh, release them back. Uh, while uh, in mass sterilizing, what we do is we work with existing NGOs uh, like uh, dogs for, uh, sorry, uh, uh, like Friendicos uh, used to do earlier. They had uh, MCG contract and then uh, now uh, Jeep Daya is doing uh, Sunil Dhankar. Uh, they are doing uh, MCG contract uh, of, of sterilization. We work with them and we get uh, most of the dogs from our locality 
sterilized and then um, get them released back in the same area so i think that's an amazing uh, job nikhil and i must congratulate you i think you guys now have a van also i saw an update on social media that yes. there is a van which you guys have so you guys were doing it without a van till now or this is your second van yes up till now up till now without any ambulance uh, okay. it's been 5 years and it was a 5 year long dream which has just now come true uh, because of our lovely donors who have supported us and who have helped us uh, throughout the five years of whatever work we have done <clears throat> and uh, now we can take and do more cases work with other ngos more not necessarily we can take every case we would still be selective to what kind of a work we do we know our limitations that what kind of a case we can cater to if it's extreme critical case and needs of doctor 24 by 7 we cannot have a case like that because we don't do not have an in house doctor um so uh, you know we we take different kind of cases which we can manage easily and uh, for for other cases extremely critical we try and get in touch with other ngos and and work with them simultaneously yeah that's great i think uh, you know i have heard so much uh, about the good work which you have done in all these years and it is so nice to you know see that there were so many constraints but you were still able to do uh, like you know i have heard lot of people that they can do but they do not have a van they can do but they do not have money but you know i think you have uh, been one such person who have been doing a lot of work while there are so many constraints i have never seen anything while even i was talking to you uh, you know before uh, going live and one thing which i liked uh, while i was talking to you and people should take that inspiration from you is that you know you never ever spoke anything negative i mean you were so positive uh, and uh, when i saw this uh, van ka update and then i thought that i actually did never ask you and is this your first van or uh you know this is the second van and you know people sometimes have multiple vans right uh, and uh, that is amazing it's a great uh, uh, work uh, very inspired and very motivated after hearing uh, your story uh, we have savita um, uh, saying uh, hey ridima saying hello shrishti sharma saying hello and then we have uh, yeah and then we have uh, karan also saying hello Uh, minty has an uh, has a yeah has a question around snake rescue we will talk about it minty when we will talk about how uh, nikhil actually started uh, umeed it will just stay tuned we are going to cover that and we have got uh, kian paul elliot saying hi uh, so um, hi yeah so you you so you know i also wanted to understand that uh, while you uh, Uh, while you're doing, you know, all this, how do you, uh, how do you release, you know, these animals back? I mean, you rightly said that. Uh, is there a process you follow uh, that you know sometimes, let's say, animal came and it stayed for about ten days? Uh, you were actually mentioning about a proper process which you guys follow. How do you do the release work? So. Uh, if if uh, an animal comes say for an instance there is an injury there is a wound and uh, it takes 10 days or 15 days for the animal to heal uh, especially dogs they're very intelligent they know everything about their area if they are an adult dog uh, they are absolutely fine with uh, the release when we take them back and uh, do the same it's just uh, at times we have to uh, figure out a couple of things if if there is um, you know a chance that that animal can again get hurt or injured or there is some issue that we have to keep a look at uh, we try and uh, look for the reporter the person who had reported the case and uh, we we request them that if you're nearby keep an eye on this dog keep feeding this dog off, off and on so we will get an update that the animal is absolutely fine that the dog is absolutely fine um there was one case uh, there was a dog chumri we picked up from chakarpur about uh, um two and a half months back uh, at the time of lockdown she had a maggot wound uh, we treated her then we released her back 
um and then we got to know from the feeder and an amazing person who reported who who was just a follower of our page but he saw that uh, we rescued jhumri from that area and then we uh, released jhumri back in that area and then he called me again that uh, nikhil jhumri is not doing well you have released her back but uh, it's been about 10 days and she is not uh, walking properly or eating properly i said okay i'll have a look at it immediately next day we went and we checked uh, and jhumri was not doing well so we decided to pick up jhumri again and uh, she has been there in umeed since then and i don't think so we can release her back because uh, there is some other other reason for which she is not doing well in her area she is a very timid and shy dog um, maybe that is the reason or somebody um, you know hates her or there is something uh, happening and this kind of a dog cannot be released back and she is any which ways uh, uh, you know a little bit in the middle age bracket she is about 8 9 years of age so um, i hope if everything goes well she will stay with us for the rest of her life right so uh, nikhil i also wanted to understand that what are uh, what, what who are these people who <coughs> generally report uh, these cases to you are they people who are feeding these dogs in different localities do you work through a network or it is more random how does it happen all kind of people rana i i I'll, i'll give you today's example and uh, uh it's an amazing situation it it was uh, i mean not from the dog's point of view dog was really in distress but uh, from the people who reported to the person i contacted everything i'm going to explain and it is so amazing uh, i get random calls from people uh, who are taking care of their community animals or they are pass by they are just in form or uh, you know even if they are not feeders and they stay there and see these dogs and one is hurt they try and google search the ngos and if they if they most of them would find in gurgaon umeed and uh, they would give me a call and uh, we attend all those calls uh, even if we cannot help we try and connect them to other ngos that uh, uh, you must uh, um, you know help help this in this situation this particular animal or dog so um what happened today was uh, somebody just a normal person from uh, sector 5 near sector 5 uh, called me that uh, a dog has a major injury a, a bone which was too big which was too big and um, um, you know entire side the shoulder was completely torn apart by by whatever i have no idea about that this person called me uh, i knew a volunteer nearby uh, in that area i contacted that person that go and check on this dog immediately needs immediate help that person went within half an hour all uh, three of them got the dog to dr shelley's clinic where we do maximum treatment and the treatment started the dog is in now in umeed i mean it was such a smooth situation that one person called i contacted another and the dog was you know, the dog received help and the dog is in umeed without even you know using the ambulance or anything the situation was taken care of so they're amazing people and um, the person who helped and rescued it was his first rescue his name is aman uh, i'm sure he would uh, watch the program sometime and he, he would uh, see this as well he was i'm very proud of him and i'm very proud of all the people even the others who helped the dog because it was it was such a bad situation of a dog one or two more days he wouldn't have received help the dog wouldn't have survived for sure so uh, i have been working from past 5 years just like this without ambulance just like this people would come forward report and help at times they will hire private ambulance and send the dogs to us or they'll work out some way they will even get it in auto uh, amazing people all these people actually make what umeed is doing it's not wow. uh, what we only do it's everyone's contribution towards uh, this work 
two days back uh, the day we uh, actually discussed about uh, this uh, we had a german shepherd uh, abandoned on gurgaon faridabad road there was one person who reported and then there was a couple from a scooty they stopped and they stood there till the time i didn't reach to the uh, place and uh, that german shepherd has a huge uh, tumor uh, at the back and uh, amazing dog he is and they they kept the dog with them without fearing that the dog may attack them or bite them or do something because it's a heavy uh, traffic road with fast moving vehicles anything could have happened these kind of people gave us umeed yeah i mean that's, that's what, what you know i like whenever i when, whenever i have asked anything and you know while talking to you i have always got a very positive uh, output from you and it gives me uh, you know very it makes me very warm from inside and i really really like uh, the way you explain all these positive stories i'm sure you would have got some you know negative side of it and here is a question at the right right time uh, not this one dinkar will come back to you uh i picked up uh yeah so uh you know minty is saying what has been the toughest phase while running umeed what kept you going a lot of people want to open an animal shelter today what is your message to them so so you know while you know i have always heard a lot of positivity from you but there would have been some phases which are very very tough phases and how did you overcome them that is primarily the question so so rana the most important thing in life is not just running a shelter um, what my understanding of life is you will always get through tough phases if you have the right attitude you're positive about it and you're working towards your vision what you are thinking to do in in long term uh, it doesn't matter um, i'll be very honest if i give small little details from past 5 years we, we are in a place where we do not have 24 hour electricity we only get electricity for 6 hours in a day it's an agriculture land and we have been working there from past 5 years so uh, we have overcome all these challenges just through the will of uh, our staff and uh, entire team of umeed and our supporters of of um, you know making it happen making it good for the animals irrespective of the situation we have uh, uh, very tough weather conditions in summers it gets extremely hot in winters it's extremely cold because it's an open area uh, close to the jungle then in rains it's heavy rain but in spite of all that the right attitude is there towards the working and yes we all get frustrated there are tough times we do not have money but every time every time we are down and out people our supporters have come forward and supported us and and kept the faith back that you keep working we will support you and that's yeah, what also, keeps me going yeah also you know uh, minty how i see it and i was discussing it with vanna before we uh, you know I, i i keep discussing with vanna many times and then you know with nikhil also we, i was talking and something you know which is common is that if it is not tough you should not do it you should you actually leave your job and you come to do something which is extraordinary because it is tough because not anybody else is doing so the day you realize it is not tough it is not worth of worth doing it so that is you know how i feel it feel and you know you get that kick out of it that it is you are you know yeah. you are making some difference in people's life and it is not actually limited to only ngos or in welfare but it it you know cuts across anybody who actually leaves uh, a very comfortable life and chooses to uh, go completely in a different way where he is trying to build values it can be giving jobs it can be creating some wealth for people so it can be in many many ways and and i i and nikhil have been talking about it and uh, we find that with that this is very common with uh, people who actually you know take it uh, take a stride which is not a common stride i mean it is uh, something which is very different so so that's that's how i sum, sum it up uh, i i have a friend called dinkar he is asking um 
so dinkar has asked a question and he is a great friend of mine uh, he is saying that is it right to release the animal back to the surroundings or would it be better to place the place it in a shelter forever releasing uh, is putting them back in the urban jungle so uh, dinkar we have spoken about it and nikhil actually briefly covered that up and what i understand from nikhil is that we uh, generally Uh, he he would like the animal to go back uh, from where it was uh, picked up if the time has not uh, passed too much i mean if the animal came got fixed in about you know 10 days then they will go and release and if in case the animal you know took about a month or two or three months then he has to stay back in the shelter uh, even when they actually send the animal back to the place then they actually keep in touch with someone so that they know Uh, whether this animal is adjusting to the new surround the old surroundings or not and in case it is not then they get the animal back uh, right nikhil anything uh, i missed which i learned yeah i like to i'd like to add uh, add something to this uh, exact answer of what uh, dinkar is asking uh, see it is very important and it is for everyone whom server is listening to understand there is nothing greater than freedom in this world okay freedom is the most important thing you don't get food you don't get uh, medical help you don't get anything that's fine but freedom is the most important thing and everybody be it animals or humans are striving for that freedom now what happens um, there are a lot of cases wherein uh, the dog is picked up from a certain location for a treatment there's an injury or something but dog would not like to stay anywhere irrespective you give them a good food or good medication or other friends love care doesn't matter i'll give you another example because i i generally talk with examples there was a dog uh, in in 2017 was rescued from malibu town um, gurgaon uh, he had a mouth tumor Uh, and uh, he would not be able to eat anything solid and there was no way it could have been removed uh, if if he would have operated uh, the entire jaw would have gone with it so any which ways the dog wouldn't couldn't eat anything so we kept the dog on uh, liquid diet uh, according to vets then we started some supportive medication and we we started chemotherapy as well this dog for one month kept trying to run away from the center eventually one evening he somehow managed to escape and uh, and after that there was night so we couldn't see we didn't find try to find that dog we didn't do anything morning when sab woke up they they were looking for veer where is veer and we realized veer is not there so there was a um, um, colonel who sent veer to us and he used to come and meet veer uh, a colonel was the feeder of that veer i gave a call to colonel that colonel um, colonel in between i just said colonel and colonel replied that i was about to call you nikhil have you released veer back i said no colonel he ran away yesterday evening and within one night he crossed i don't know how many territories of other dogs and he reached malibu town from gurgaon faridabad road it is amazing it is just amazing and then we decided that we rather keep we there and and treat him there with whatever medication is possible on spot treatment we would not like to take his freedom away he was so happy at his place and that freedom was so important for him that even a treatment or a good food good diet was irrelevant for him and we had multiple cases uh, you you said about vandana there was a case about uh, from vandana's area where she used to live i rescued a dog and that dog mm-hmm. ran away three times and third time actually nobody could find him he was he was such an escape artist so you know um, we think a lot of times about dogs from human point of view but shelter is absolutely a wrong thing from a dog point of view there is no place you can house the dog for life long if dog belongs to a street and knows how to survive over there let the dog be keep 
an eye on the dog but let the dog be because the freedom they get about a kilometer of territory is very important to them they want to live that life they don't want ac cooler fan nothing that freedom is the most important thing for them yeah so uh, you know i have a very interesting question this is a very broad level question and i think uh, you are the best person to answer why people actually abandon these animals i mean uh, so so you have been working more with the street uh, animals and yes uh, with abandoned dogs uh, as well and animals as well so why would somebody do that i fail to understand the human mindset Uh, yeah, I mean, like I shared here. about that dog, German Shepherd, uh, two days two days back. He is such an amazing dog. We have named him Marshall. There is no issue with his temperament. The only thing is he has a tumor, which can be, you know, people could have kept, people could have asked NGOs to help. We would have helped. We would have done something. But no, they will just come and release the dog in the open because they don't want to. what i understand his his tumor was getting burst so every day there would be a blood flow or something people in the house would have been tired of cleaning and doing all that work uh, just leave him just throw him out that's the kind of attitude people have and i i fail to understand the human race completely that these dogs who have served you i have n number of stories rana there is one very emotional story and because we have talked about abandonment i have to share that story that story in the initial phase of omid had sh- sh- had shaken me up completely that how amazing dogs can be so there was great a dog story. 13 year old lab. ha okay not the great dane story uh, labrador story. no no okay. no oh. 13 13 year old labrador female labrador was rescued from somebody's house and the dog was tied all her life all her life this gentleman who saw the dog at the age of 13 that she was tied morning evening in 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 summers in rains every time she was tied he rescued the dog he got the dog to us that dog wo- had so many issues uh, she had enlarged heart she had asthma bronchitis skin issues multiple body tumors what not and and this dog in half an hour first half an hour of stay in umid had uh turned completely the uh, uh, the tongue had completely turned blue was out of breath because she she couldn't survive that kind of a uh, atmosphere heat and she was panting i immediately rushed the uh, dog to the vet we got the dog treated i fostered that dog for another 6 months we named her ash i that in the last few days she refused to walk i would pick her and take her down from my apartment and um, for her regular duties and there was a time she stopped eating completely completely so and we are we in umeed are completely against euthanasia completely we do not uh, have the right to kill anyone if we cannot um, give you know a life to anyone so we completely believe in that so few doctor said that euthanasia is the best possibility she has a lot of medical issue we said no we we kept on doing this um, uh, you know saline therapy and everything then uh, one day there was a communicator associated with us she said that uh, ash is waiting to meet the owners once once so i immediately gave a call to the person who had rescued the dog i said you get me the owners for once it is very important within couple of days they arranged the meeting the owners came uh, especially the female of the house ash was only waiting to meet that female the moment she met and these guys left couple of hours later she left the world you know we cared for ash for over 6 months we did everything everything but people who did cruelty to her in spite of that ash was only waiting to meet them once for the last time and then she left the world yeah yeah that's how amazing dogs that's are 
Yeah, so there is this uh, documentary, The Secret Lives of Dogs, uh, which is, I think, done by BBC or Oxford, one of these guys. And there's a dog which travels about 300 miles across Australia to reach his home back. They actually, It's a sheep yeah. dog. They are all shepherds. Yeah. And then they give it to their friends who, who are like, you know, very far away. And then the dog manages to travel uh, you know, that much uh, uh, on, on his own. And he actually figures out the way. And it is still a mystery that, you know, how he would have uh, done that. So uh, very interesting and uh, very very secret about uh, them that, you know, there is either a sixth sense or how do they do it. There's a book around it, which actually talks about yeah. that people say that they can go by smell. Some people say that they can go by, uh, you know, sound and stuff like that. But there are some things which they do, which are completely unknown. And uh, yeah. yes, you rightly said. It's beyond human uh, understanding. Yeah, uh, there's a question by Dhanraj Malik. Uh, he says that uh, horses and donkeys are found abused and injured. Uh, what have you done? Have you ever filed a case on them? And then what was the result? Uh, yes, I don't know did. whether you have filed a case or not. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we did. We're still fighting that case. Back in 2015, okay. I was uh, I was coming back from uh, Delhi. I The moment I crossed Ambience Mall, I saw uh, three, four, uh, you know, uh, uh, kids uh, taking a, a horse buggy uh, to that marriage buggy we have. Uh, they were dragging the horses, and horses refused to walk. It was July, peak peak summer, and they refused to walk. So immediately, I stopped my car. I went and uh, I asked, "Why are you trying to drag the horses?" They said, "We have to take them to sector 14. Mein, sham ko shadi hai. And uh, the moment I saw all these kids were uh, minors. They were not even uh, over 18. And then I started checking the horses. Horses were completely injured. They had multiple injuries. And when I asked the boys, boys were saying that uh, to abhi lagi, to abhi mein scratch ho gaya. as if I don't understand what's the difference between uh, a fresh wound and a wound which was uh, which an animal got about two, three days back or a week back or two weeks back. So I immediately uh, called the DLF phase three police station. Uh, we filed an FIR. We got the horses confiscated, got them to Umid. They were in Umid up till uh, last year, 2019. But we had some challenges. So we uh, requested our friends, uh, Bob and Jean Aspen Foundation. You, you would know about them. Uh, they work for donkeys uh, and horses. So we requested them then uh, that if they can uh, take over uh, the horses for lifelong. So the horses are with um, Aspen Foundation. They are taking care of them. And uh, we are in regular touch with them. And uh, these horses are living a freedom life, which they never lived before. Good. And the case, Great. So case is still going on. We are fighting. They're okay. still fighting. Great. So great. So you know, Dinkar, we we have a question from you about feeding bird, uh, stray birds. I mean, uh, you know, wild birds and interfering with uh, nature. Is is that an in interference with the nature? So Dinkar, we'll cover this uh, question in the next uh, episode, which we are going to be doing with Nikhil on feeding of stray animals and you know different types of animals. So uh, we have already planned it. Uh, there is. Uh, uh, I got to, uh, actually what happened is that in my, where I live in Gurgaon in sector 43, uh, there is a friend of ours called Anusha. She has been feeding a lot of uh, animals around about, you know, 80 dogs and we have been supporting her and we also feed a few uh, dogs around our house. Uh, and then Anusha, we wanted to actually uh, get Anusha on live and then she said that you should get Nikhil on live first. And then we wanted to do a session on a feeding of stray animals uh, and uh, and then we thought for that you know it is so interesting to uh, uh, talk to Nikhil about his own life we thought that we will first cover this and then we will get on to uh, the feeding of the animals so uh, Dinkar this question we will take it in the next session I will make sure that this gets answered and you will get certainly I will remind you that you know this is uh, sure. uh, going to be there uh, another question from Dinkar uh, is that what kind of financial help does your organization get from the government? How can normal people help your organization in the noble cause, financial or otherwise? See, we um, unfortunately we don't get any help from none of the NGOs. None of the NGOs get any help from uh, the organization. The max they get 
at times is uh, some land which we even we haven't tried for it honestly so i will not only blame the government that they haven't given us anything we have not even tried for it uh, because maybe if if they give a remote location or something i cannot operate the way i want to as of now so i i don't want to put this on government but yes there is a lot on government can be done in animal welfare uh, uh, sector which which is not done overall from the central government or the state governments it should be implemented there should be a lot of encouragement for uh, young ngos and people who want to open uh, centers and uh, shelters ko is a prime example i lo- i look up to ko i i look up to vandana all the time take inspiration from her the way she handles and manages things amazing then we have aditi badam doing posh foundation wonderful work abin of sreyan uh, uh, fauna police amazing work and all these people uh, we have uh, jeep they are in uh, gurgaon uh, friendicos is a giant of an ngo when it comes to uh, animal welfare and and Anjali. wildlife as well as anjali gopal and all creatures amazing yeah. that that's a dream place you i i want to go and live there it's that yeah. kind of a place so yeah so all these people are everybody trying to do uh, something on their own uh, but government has not helped them actually but if there is something from them something comes up then then it will be a great help like say for an instance small little thing like we don't have an xct 24 by 7 if we get a basic connection in this area of xct 24 by 7 it's a great help for us then um, your question was that financially how uh, others can help you uh see i i believe in uh, people support completely be it financial be it uh, you know as a volunteer as a helping hand or even a small share uh, of yours to one of our posts uh, can make a difference so do your bit do whatever you can uh, our our policy has been we have been like that in ummeed that we don't ask for anything we will only at times put our requirement in the post that this is the requirement we have and it's up to people to donate whatever they can uh, not even in in any case of uh, rescue we have ever asked or charged anything so um, we generally make a post make a request that with this dog we need this much money for their treatment and their survival we need rice or something and people come forward and donate and that's the kind of work we continue to do so um, uh, i'd request you to follow our facebook page or instagram page we have regular updates on everything you would get to know if there is a requirement you can help us in that you can directly send us rice or uh, you can send us any any item required which we post or you can uh, pay in cash or uh, online transfers as well so there is a link uh, we have pinned in the comments uh, so in case uh, anybody wants to uh, donate uh, please donate also please uh, you know share this live uh, on your pages on your profiles if, if you are yes. liking any of this and that will help more and more people to know that how umeed is doing and what umeed is doing and will help them connect with more people who can support them uh, we have uh, sandeep divedi's comment uh, he he is uh, appreciating Uh, you know your work many milestone to be achieved in this unique service you are giving to society uh, thank you sandeep uh, we have kavita a very interest yeah we have kavita who is saying that uh, importance of spaying and neutering uh, a lot of people are not aware about this uh, so uh, what are your views i mean so basically you know we sometimes get these uh, pet homes also wherein they have got uh, pets and they say that okay ek bar kara lete hain aur fir uske baad we will get the neutered right i tell them that that is even more cruel that you know you tell somebody that yeah. this is the yeah. pleasure of life and then you are once, not going to get it once. anymore wow yeah. <laughs> so that is uh, that is something which i That's feel and then, yeah and uh, that is and then you know when we actually moved to this house where we lived and we got some of the dogs sprayed around us and some people actually objected and they said that aapko paap lagega aisa nahi karana chahiye i know i know and <laughs> how do you <laughs> what are your views around it nikhil it it is imperative to have uh, sterilized dogs um, it's beneficial health wise uh, 
uh, people who can go and google search there are uh, positive and negative both comments but if you read and understand it properly you will find it more positive than negative and uh, nikhil we are not able to hear you i think the battery oh there's some problem wait yeah now we can hear you okay is it better yeah 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 what yeah so from from 2017 we have new uh, breeding rules uh, in india um, in which uh, no home breeding no one time mating is uh, allowed it's absolutely illegal you must have a license to breed and to sell a pet uh, you can go and check the 2017 breeding rules uh, and and pet shop rules so i i request people it's my humble request and i urge please do not think from human point of view and i'm going to be a little blunt and say something uh, up front a uh, few people might not like but that's the way i am and that's i'm going to tell you the truth we humans we get attracted looking at the opposite uh, um, gender uh, in terms of looks we get attracted that this person or uh, that person is attractive and and you know that's how we get um, you know we make friends and that's how things move forward but animals do not work that way every animal we work with there is a system if it, it's a design they will get they will come on heat and then they will look for a mate in 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 mating there will be uh, not just dogs every animal i'm talking about uh, there would be a few male uh, dogs who would fight the dominant one the one who will win the fight will get to meet uh, uh, the female for mating and then they uh, produce that's how the system works so for them attraction looking at the other um, animal is is not the thing so don't think like that ki paap chadega ya ye hoga wo hoga it everything works from the hormone uh, perspective if the hormones is going on there's a heat cycle then they will come on heat and then they will attract the opposite uh, uh, partner opposite gender partner if uh, you know there's if if you get them sterilized there is no um, hormonal changes there is no heat cycle if there is no heat cycle there is no attraction there is no fight nothing would happen it's a healthy easy and good life now uh, these days the biggest of uh, the um, trainers and dog behaviorists around the world um, are advising that please get your dog sterilized it is important it is a must uh, you know we get a lot of we, somebody asked about uh, i think web hub sir asked about uh, abandonment cases lot of people abandon their dogs because they they become territorial and aggressive why they become territorial and aggressive there's a lot uh, you know many cases in which there's hormonal changes there is a female dog nearby she's on heat your male dog is getting aggressive or is hyper would bite someone inside the house and then they will go ahead and abandon the dog so too many side effects of not neutering your dog please get your dog neutered be a responsible pet parent uh, there are a lot of dogs up for adoption we don't need to breed more uh, i don't want to talk about breeders right now that's a different topic altogether but uh, in your house please do not breed more dogs do not do illegal stuff read about things understand call experts ask them and get your dogs neutered at the right age yeah yeah so you know i also uh, try to tell people that when they say that oh we are taking it from somebody who actually had puppies in their homes and not he is not a breeder at least you know if you're taking from a licensed breeder there is you know some type of a control there but you know home is uh, uh, something which which should not uh, be done and people should you know move ahead to get uh, their dogs uh, neutered i completely agree and um, we have uh, we want we wanted to you know cover that thing uh, nikhil with you that uh, there is some noise actually uh, so uh, nikhil wanted to uh, you know understand how did you got into animal welfare and also would like to know that the snake story and how you actually became a snake rescuer 
so right from there and to me please tell us right so um rana um, the person behind umeed behind uh, me being in uh, animal welfare and being an animal activist is my wife um uh, juhi she is the one uh, who did inspired me i was traveling with her uh, back in 2014 on gurgaon faridabad road and we saw an abandoned great den um she saw rather i was just driving she asked me to stop i stopped and uh, we found this huge dog danny we named him danny later on and uh, there was a person in scorpio nearby uh, roaming here and there and was looking at who is rescuing danny i went and asked is this your dog he said yes so what happened he has uh, some temperamental issues and is biting my kids and he was a local and my wife uh, and entire family wants me to throw him away i said go and give him to a ngo why to do it like this on a road so he said no i cannot do anything beyond this you just take him do whatever you want to and he <coughs> drove away i rescued that dog after rescuing uh, we got basic uh, treatment done at uh, a veterinary clinic and <coughs> i was trying to call and use the way people do uh, i got in touch with the uh, friendicos and friendicos had some volunteer eventually the dog was taken in by them in a foster a uh, long story cut short uh, i was introduced to a lot of facebook groups uh, that time and a uh, lot of gurgaon people and immediately i saw there were a lot of demand of uh, volunteers in rescues and there were hardly any people especially male members there were a lot of female members but there were hardly any male members available for uh, rescues to stood by um, um, uh, the experience uh, rescuers uh in police stations filing a case uh, uh, doing many other thing so that's how i started and every second day there was a rescue situation i would go and attend a call i would try and learn from the seniors and slowly gradually i started fostering and there was a time i had um, um 13 puppies in my house uh with the two of my own dogs so i was fostering that was the time uh, i made up a mind that i'm going to start uh, something related to this i am not sure what i started the planning it was initially as a puppy pen and we we would help the puppies to grow and rehabilitate them back uh, but it all got scrapped it didn't work out rescuing puppies and keeping them in shelter is absolutely a disaster um, you know there are f- only few amazing people can somehow do it and vandana is again i'm mentioning her name she's one of them she's amazing how she takes care of the puppies and get them adopted um is absolutely amazing uh, but puppies do not survive there was a time in in um, uh, 2015 only we rescued from sona road we rescued about 35 odd puppies um 43 rather 43 odd puppies and uh, they were thrown out of different societies uh, their mother was thrown somewhere else and these 35 43 puppies were thrown at one particular place in sona road we went and rescued overnight we built a separate pen for them but you know what out of 43 only um, uh, few went for fosters about 7 8 only remaining 8 uh, could survive in umeed it is very difficult for puppies to survive in umeed so uh, that's how i started that's how i got into it slowly gradually we kept taking things forward initially when we had taken it was just a land with couple of rooms slowly gradually we were building if we've, we've gone very slow but um, whatever slow we have done uh, we are very proud of it that uh, you know there was no external support or excess money or anything available to us but whatever we had we sustained we fought and we kept moving forward tell us about uh, how did you became a snake rescuer i mean that's a great story uh, and at one yeah. point in time you used to be very yeah, much afraid was, of was, all the snakes i and, was yeah. i was terrified you know even if i if i'm trekking in hills and all the only thing i would be worried about is there should be no snake you know um 
but what happened um, again in 2015 there were a couple of snake cases uh, um, in the village we are uh, situation situated people informed us and uh, immediately we got in touch with wildlife sos and then the wildlife department of gurgaon and uh, we tried to help them um, uh, there was a python there was a cobra um, which was rescued by um, kishan ji who's uh, wildlife guard in gurgaon uh, but every time i would give him a call for this kind of a rescue he is um, a single person working for wildlife department in gurgaon in majority of these cases and these rescues he was not available so what happened one night um, i was going for a night check in um, in umi it was about 9ish and uh, i saw something circled up in front of my car immediately i stopped it was in front of a horse stable so i went and checked it was some snake small snake black color so um, and uh, i could see that there was an injury close to the neck so i had a bag i i opened that bag got that snake out Uh, on a stick and put it in and next day i called kishan ji and we discussed about it and that night actually while while uh, uh, looking for help i called wildlife sos but unfortunately there was no one available that night i got in touch with indian snakes uh, there's a page on facebook um, very good people uh, working towards uh, the awareness for snakes uh, in india and they told me so you have rescued uh the most venomous snake in india which is the common crate and i was shocked i was terrified that actually i've done it but it could have it could have killed me there and then but then i started gathering more information i used to see they introduced me to their group and uh, i started seeing learning from a lot of expert um, all over india and uh, uh, you know when whenever we we'll have a call of snake um the help was very late in coming um at times i had to call the local saperas and get them rescued and then release them in the jungle making sure that they are not taking the snake with them i'll be with them all the time slowly gradually and we stay in a uh, place where we get to see a lot of snakes in rain time even a few days back there was a snake uh, in, in our center so um slowly gradually i had to learn this art i uh, learned it from a lot of experts i read i studied about it i got equipments uh, um i ordered my equipments from indian snakes only and uh, i i follow a uh, one person in india who is a master i call him a master he is a magician for me his name is ajay giri and he is um, you know he is in karnataka agombe rainforest he has rescued over 700 king cobra still now and uh, his rescues are magical it is so smooth um, you know i get mesmerized seeing him the way he rescues these big giant snakes who are highly venomous um that's how slowly gradually it kept happening there was a need there was a requirement and i had to overcome my fear learn train about it get the right equipments learn the right way to uh, rescue snakes and release and i'm still learning there's a lot to learn i I'm, i'm i'm still an amateur at palmas and an amateur very initial stage i am at but uh, the only thing is because gurgaon needs more rescuers uh, there's only one person um, a few years back i got to know mr anil gandhas in gurgaon who does a lot of rescues snake rescues and monitor lizard uh, he's the only person working actually and there was nobody else wildlife sos have uh, less people and they have um you know a lot much of work uh, to handle so to encounter this situation that which snakes what happens either um, the snake would get killed or the people would get killed um if there is an interaction between human and snakes so to solve this situation i had to step in i had to learn this art and then now yes i'm 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 here and try to do whatever best possible sorry <laughs> that's an amazing story actually so uh, i would like to also you know uh, just this is the last question which we are taking from people and then we will wrap it up 
uh, do you have any you know programs for, for children i mean can children come and volunteer work with animals is there uh, anything like that and i think juhi bhatcharya says that yes nikhil uh, does conduct sessions for school kids uh, please uh, tell us more about it yes Mona we have already done very very regular on our uh, all the lives and uh, she has a, a daughter called adhika who is very much interested uh, in becoming either a veterinarian or a marine biologist and uh, that's amazing uh, I, that's amazing <laughs> so she is asking for her uh, daughter yeah. so we have already done a uh, few sessions in pathway school we have done um, um, a session close to diwali in uh, um, um i forgot the name of the school uh, sec- it's in sector 46 uh i forgot the name of the school sorry but we have already okay, done no some sessions we yeah. we have a ppt we want to conduct more sessions the only thing we fall short of is volunteers i want to train more people young people who can um, talk to schools go give sessions volunteer uh, make more awareness because i also believe in the same thing it is very difficult to change people who are adults but we can change our youth we can change our young kids we can make them more compassionate towards animals and that's what we uh, we we want to do we want more volunteers to come forward and work in this program with us we have everything ready is just a basic setup uh, we will give them we'll provide them and then they can do and go and conduct sessions in different school different classes and make more awareness about it got it nikhil one question which i would like to ask uh, from you you know when you started this and uh, when this all uh, you know me would have started very small and you said that you did everything very slowly uh, p- people know you more now uh, i would like to understand you know how your family especially your dad your mom uh, uh, they they reacted to it and uh, what do they feel now they still don't understand what i do Wow. Even okay. today he had asked me how, what. So uh, right. it is still a question mark for them, and it is very hard for me to explain uh, that what exactly I do, how do I get support of people, how do I get cases reported. It's very hard for me to make him understand. But whatever work I do, he's very proud of it. You know, he's the first person to. um circulate in the entire family groups or everywhere that nikhil has done this there is an article on nikhil's name uh, he's in the papers or he's taken an ambulance now he's done a snake rescue whatever he's very proud of it he doesn't understand anything but still he's very proud of it voice rana i can't hear you rana no sorry sorry it was yeah. on mute yeah. because there was some echoes and so nikhil i was saying thank you very much uh, every time i thank speak you so to much. you i get more and more energized because mm-hmm. the way you explain things full of positivity and uh, you know they say that constraint is the mother of all innovations and opportunities yes. and yes. i can see that uh, happening uh, with you uh, uh, all the time whenever you know we have uh heard any story from you it is start from a constraint and then you know you say this is how we solved it and uh, this is amazing uh you know a big applause to you what you are doing and everybody at umeed especially your wife uh, because she has uh, been your inspiration and motivator to do what you are doing and uh, congratulations and thank you very much for uh, being uh, here and sharing your story with everybody uh people we so are much, going sir. to yeah you're welcome we are going to do another uh, live with uh, nikhil where we are going to talk about the do's and don'ts of feed, feeding animals on the street stray, stray animals basically uh, should we feed them around street should we feed them away from the street what are the guidelines so i got to know from nikhil there are proper guidelines about it and we are going to be discussing that we will cover other animals also like you know then dinkar asked about the question related to birds so we are, we are going to do that uh, so very soon you will see that happening uh, please follow us uh, if you are not following our page yet and you will keep 
uh, getting these updates from us uh, time to time. Thank, thank you, Rikhil, you so much. One you. last thing, I have one request from every viewer we have. Uh, you know, uh, I understand there would be a lot of people who can help animals, who cannot help animals. Everyone has their own uh, situation. But one very important thing, if everyone can uh, come together and do their small bit of even keeping clean water for any animal or birds, it's a big deal because water is more important than food. People need to understand this and it's way too hot outside, especially in our region. Please try and keep clean water every day. It's a very good practice to make your kids learn responsibility that every day, a couple of times, they will go and change and clean the water and make keep clean water for animals or birds in your balcony, anywhere possible. Very small thing, but makes a huge difference. And kids can learn a lot from this. Thank you right. so much. Thank you so much, Rana. Thank it was uh, an your... honor to be here yeah. on, on Dog Spot. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.